Uh, it's six o'clock. Um, I think that we will get going if everybody's ready. We are still waiting for a couple of people um, to come in on uh, joining us remotely, um, but they can pop in when they're when they're ready. So whenever you're ready to get going, Mr. Chairman. I would like to call to order the Citizen Advisory Committee for March 1st, 2021. I would like to start with a roll call. Bird. Present. Klassen. Present. Gilmore. Present. Hodges. Present. Holloway. Present. Johnson. Present. Kelly. Kiefer. Present. Lord. Present. Miller. Present. Nolan. Uh, Nolan. Present. Thank you. Present. Obleton. Present. Patel. Winkler. We do have a quorum, so the meeting can continue. Thank you, Heather. I would like to see if there's any citizens with CAC business to present to the CAC. Seeing none, um, I move that we next we'll do a review and approve minutes for the February 1st, 2021 meeting. Move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? It's been moved and approved. Um, next, we have the review and acceptance of financial report through January. I'll and move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Chad and seconded by Bird. Um, is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? It's been approved. Next, we have an action item. Um, it is the year 45 late audit extension request from Family Resources. I'll turn it over to you, Heather. Uh, thank you. Um, so in uh, this most recent communication with Family Resources, um, if you recall, at the last meeting, uh, the CAC voted to give them um, an additional extension, um, which was uh, to have the audit in by February 8th, which was a date that they had indicated in their previous communication that would be when they would have the audit ready. And unfortunately, on that date, we did not um, get an audit from them. We did get an email saying that the delays were continuing. Um, they were continuing to... Um, uh, you know, have issues getting the audit completed. Uh, we did hold a conference call with them on February 9th uh, on an unrelated issue, but during that call, we discussed with them the audit and conveyed to them um, the ongoing discussions that had been occurring at CAC at the January and February meetings um, about the late audit and the concern that was had. And so um, we had asked them to submit to us um, whatever financial statements that they could provide of whatever kind that they could provide and also um, a letter from their board or their executive director because our concern was that, um, you know, uh, people in higher positions needed to be aware of the discussions that were going on. So they did provide those items to us. Um, they are included for your review in your packet. Um, and at that time, they provided to us a draft audit. Uh, it's not yet voted upon or approved by their board. Um, and they did request another extension uh, through March 15th, at which time he says that the audit will be completed. And that's the update that I have for you. So for today, um, the decision is to grant the additional audit extension request or to not grant the extension request. Heather, I have a question. What was the primary reason why it could not be completed? Um, well, we did uh, get a letter um, signed by their president, CEO, and their board chair, um, and that's included in your packet. 
but um, she does um, kind of restate some of their earlier reasons. Um, they've had a lot of staff turnover, especially in the finance department, which we have discussed here before uh, in terms of their bookkeeper, their finance director are all new. Um, uh, she also indicates that they um, disaffiliated with Four Oaks, which for those that don't know, Four mm -hmm. Oaks is a regional mental health, um, uh, uh, like the, the corollary to Vera yeah. French, but in um, Johnson and Cedar County, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, so they have disaffiliated in October, which um, I wasn't aware of, were you? No, that, so that's new information for us. Um, and then... Uh, the timing, of course, they said that the audit was delayed because of those two issues. So, um, and then the pandemic, which she also references. So uh, two of those three reasons were the same that they have stated before. The, the disaffiliation was news to us. Um, so that is the reason that they stated. I, be, I think I have statements from um, Miller as well as Bird. Miller, go first. I don't find these reasons to be compelling. I want to point out that their fiscal year end was June 30th, and their finance person did not leave until the uh, first part of December. The disaffiliation occurred in October of 2019. So all of these things, I don't find a compelling reason. This is the third extension, and when I read the correspondence, initially, they weren't even willing to give a date they would have it done. They just said soon. Mm -hmm. I, I find this to be very disturbing. In addition, if you look at the finance, they're the only ones who have made absolutely no draws. So I think there's trouble in paradise. Um, I do want to, I agree. Um, and I think I'll, Dawn, if you want to talk about the draws that um, we've handled from Family Resources this year, because there is a reason there's no dollar amount there. Right. So I think, um, I think we discussed it in one of our um, previous meetings that the first several draws that they had um, given us um, were not correct or accurate and had either the wrong information or um, uh, some of their um, drawdown balances weren't. Correct. So we would send them back for correction. And I think to the last um, time I provided technical assistance, I had asked them to just look over like all three months worth and then um, present them to me. So I believe coming up here soon that we're back on track after providing technical assistance, but you are correct. It was a path to get there. It was three draws in three consecutive, draws right? In consecutive in a row. The year. Yes. Correct. Um, so I would say that it took us through, and I can double check my record, through to about November to December to get us to where we need to be. So I would expect in this next draw, you'll see um, money producing. No, it took, it took quite a while. Yes. No, understood. Thank you. Bert? Uh, I'd just like to say, I'm, uh, Chris took the words out of my mouth. I'm inclined to agree with Chris. Uh, but I just had a question, um, and I don't know if uh, structurally if this is possible, but if we were to approve uh, an extension, um, is there a way to uh, penalize them financially from next year's grant if they don't meet you know, $500 a day off of their next year's grant if they don't have it to us by what were they were the 15th they were requesting is is that um, possible to do uh, in that manner? so um, wrapped up in there I think is two questions so one uh, can their finances be impacted in some way and I think yes I mean so we'll talk about in our next action item the structure of how the formula works because we have several new members and um, how the CAC can vote to override the proposed amounts from the formula. So absolutely the dollar amounts can be changed. Um, to the question of can there be a, a daily penalty, um, there's nothing in HUD rules that would say 
that there can't be or there can be. I mean, it's um, up to the group to decide how they want to proceed. Um, uh, the other option would be contingent awards. So um, you could not, you know, this funding is being awarded, but it's subject to uh, completing the audit and turning it in by a certain date. Um, and I can tell you from a staff perspective, we would not go to contract with them. If there is an award, we wouldn't be able to go to contract with them until the audit was submitted and reviewed. So, um, cause if there's issues, we need to know them. So I think there's several different ways that could be approached. I think a daily penalty would be one. I think, um, I think a lump sum change uh, during the allocation would be one. And if any award of any amount is made, I would propose it would need to be contingent because just from an oversight standpoint, we, we can't sign with them anyway. So it would have to be contingent upon. Thank you, Heather. Brett? Then we'll get Joe. Yeah, I, um, I've been looking for the draft, the draft, and I don't see anything that looks like a draft um, audit. Uh, we turn them to the finance. I mean, we, I mean, we have it, but we, don't typically hand out audits in the CAC packet, so I oh, did not I include it. I thought you it. said I thought you said it was in our packet. Oh uh, no, I we, we included the communications in the packet and okay. we gave the audit to our finance. Okay, department, that which having would have been, been our standard practice. That having been audit. said, they missed the first deadline. We extended, and they missed that one. The first one they didn't even get the the request in on time. That's. Strike two was the second one they missed. For me, strike three was this last one. Mm -hmm. They've had, um, they've had every time they asked for an extension, we gave them more time than they requested and they didn't make it. So that's why when I scored them, I scored them as a zero and, and recommended we didn't fund them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you, Fred. Joseph. Did everyone hear that? Did they hear? Uh, I don't know if at home you could hear uh, Joseph's comments, um, but in case you couldn't. No. Uh, so Joseph's question was, should the application even be considered for year 47 funding because um, the audit is an application requirement and since they haven't turned it in, the application isn't complete. I mean, I, it was a question to the room. I, were you directing it? Is there, is there any discussion or thoughts about that? Yeah, yeah, that's why we gave them extensions, Joe. And they didn't make the extension, so that's why I gave them a zero because I felt their application was incomplete when they missed the second, actually the third deadline. Is anyone at home? Hey, Heather. Okay. Yes, go ahead. So, and anyone at home, feel free to... Um, make any comments, just be sure to identify yourself just so that we can um, get you down. Hey, Heather, this is Tammy. Um, the audit, I, I have to remember because we had a discussion about this in 2017. And um, HUD says they just have to submit an audit every year. They don't have a date that they have to be in by, correct? That's correct, yes. And we, the CAC does not see these audits. So I guess, why, why did we put these audits with the packet? And I guess my, my other thing is, we don't see these audits because we're not privy to them. Shouldn't it be something that's between the city and the organizations and we shouldn't even be involved in it? Um. I can go ahead, Heather. Uh, so, um, so for, to the first question, um, we don't typically put the audits into the packets, um, but I do want to clarify everything that crosses our desk are public records. Anybody can request them. CAC can request them if you want to. Um, we just typically don't publicize them widely because it is financial private information of the agencies, but by virtue of us having it in our hands, it is public record. So, um, anybody can see them. Um, so there's that. But yes, we don't typically um, give them to the CAC for analysis, partly because it's just so 
very particular that, you know, our finance department looks at them. They tell us what we need to be concerned with. We look through them, see if there's any concerns that we have. Um, and it goes to the overall financial health of the agency. So that's why we have to get them. And you're correct, HUD doesn't give us a date. Um, they just say that to do our due diligence, we need to be looking at financial statements. Um, to your other point of, uh, you know, why are, why is the CAC involved in this discussion at all? Um, so the 2017 uh, decision about the audit extension requirements came about in part because previous to that, the CAC wasn't involved in the audits and we just weren't getting them. Um, so at that time we had an agency that didn't turn in their audit and it kind of became apparent there were a lot of financial issues. And because we had so many late audits, it was hard to enforce um, an audit requirement against one agency versus other agencies. Mm -hmm. And so the audit policy came about to make it more consistent and also to take it, it, to take staff out of the role of granting extensions and put that into the CAC's hands since they are the ones that determine applicant eligibility anyhow. So, um, so that's kind of how the policy came about. Um, but HUD doesn't mandate, as I said, any particular date or any particular way of dealing with it, only that we have to deal with it in some way. Okay. Because my only concern is being HUD just says you just need to look at them um, every year and they don't give a date which you need to look by. I, I have a concern about um, taking money away from them. And if we're going to go down that road, then I would like to see what the city's legal department says about it. Okay. I Thank mean, you. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, we have Fred. I'm personally not concerned about the legal aspect at all because as far as I'm concerned, they did not turn in an application. It was a requirement for the application. It's a rule. We extended the rule twice. They didn't meet it. To me, they did not turn in an application. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Fred. We'll have Dale next. I, I guess my, my position is that we're not taking the money away from them. We're, we're just not awarding them additional funding, funding for the following year. Now, I, I can understand that, we're, that okay, we, we, since we've already voted a year ago, you know, to give them the funding, that, that we're committed to that. But there's, there's the, you know, there's no law or any rule that says, you know, if we could, we could, we could uh, vote to give them one dollar and send them a message, except that we're, by, we would have to override the rule because it says that if there's any, min, uh, if there's any award, the minimum is $5,000. But, but we could we could change that and give them a dollar to send them a message and then reallocate their funds to the other organizations if we wanted to. Again, we're not taking any money away from them. We're just not giving them additional money for next year. So I don't think that that's a, I don't think that that's a problem. Thank you, Dale. Chat. Yeah, I agree with Fred too on this because I mean I think we're setting a precedent if we just it's one of our requirements to have this in on time and by the date we specify if if we keep going down this road we're setting a precedent for other agencies and why you know other agencies have gotten it on time so they should be awarded the money why should family resources you know be awarded money when they haven't followed our stipulations is there any additional comments or questions yes we have joseph yes. then we'll get you next or joseph question that arises from there is, oh, are we going to say, okay, and they didn't do it on time. They didn't tell us at the time that they didn't turn it in that they didn't turn it in. This happened after the fact. And then they missed a couple of other deadlines. I have a concern, as, as was said earlier, I have a concern when how do we want to set ourselves in a situation where if anybody says that they want an extension they couldn't make it, we put the next board in a situation where they have to say, okay, yeah, we got to go along with whatever because we've done it. And 
and we've done it even when it wasn't completed by the time we were signing up. Thank you, Joseph. Um, I had someone at home. This is Reagan Johnson. I just have a quick comment. I would, I, I, I'm in agreement with, with Fred as far as this is their third strike. I was also unaware um, and just interested to hear that they've had um, inaccurate draws and um, are, are taking technical time from staff. Um, so, uh, I, I think I'm I'm on I'm on board with uh, not granting another extension. Are there any other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to call the question. Um, I have. This is Nancy. Oh, go ahead, Nancy. Sorry. Oh yeah, I was just you know having my first time around being able to, I mean these basically are requests for for a proposal, so it's like any non-for-profit out there, we're, we give them these points. We, number four, program compliance. And there's two options on that. If they were previously funded or not previously funded, they have to meet this criteria that I'm to evaluate and it's weighted, you know, 35 points. So, and so for the person of this, this organization, for example, has had previously funded, and we are to evaluate that it includes meeting proposed goals, have they promptly submitted accurate quarterly reports, payout requests, maintaining financial program records in compliance with CDBG regulations, and expending those funds in a timely manner. So the purpose of this is to evaluate them based on criteria they've been given. And it and they're responding, you know, they have their response in their box that they follow all the regulations and maintaining and financial program or records, but we're sitting here uh, realizing that we we're not getting timely manner and that um, they're not compliant. So, uh, and this, they're not brand new to this. And when I evaluated all of the programs that submitted their, you know, response to the proposals, um, and I see how some of them do them so well and succinctly, there's, it's just hard to, equally give the point for an organization that is failing to meet that, you know, and with that, with that, I mean, I know it's not our responsibility to counsel them, but at the same time, being, we need to be compliant with what we're, we're asking them to be compliant with. So I'm, I'm like with, with the others, it's, it's, it's puts us in a frustrating situation, but if you just go in a, structured manner here, they're not meeting number four. So, um, you know, I, I took off points for that. Uh, and, and I'm trying to not be subjective because I'm, you know, I'm, I know family resources have been in our community for a long time and I understand they do make a contribution, but there apparently is some deficiency in the organization they need to work on. And yet, how do we, you know, it's hard to award somebody who hasn't succeeded in, in that step that, that seems to be their weak spot. So I tend to agree that it's kind of hard to move this forward uh, when others have done exactly what they needed to do to qualify for consideration of funding. Thank That's you. it. Thank you, Nancy. Chad? Yeah, I just have a question. What happens if we uh, make the motion to not accept the, uh, the extension? What's the process then? What happens? So, um, it, to, I think 
the answer to that question is in our next um, action item. If this weren't an allocation night, if we were making this decision on not an allocation night, um, uh, if you remember back to January, there were two questions. One was, do you grant them an extension? And if not, are they eligible for funding in year 47? Since then, obviously the application deadline has happened. They've already submitted an application. So we can't say they're not eligible to apply for funding because they already did. Um, so the question then becomes our next action item is if you're not going to extend them and we're considering the application incomplete, do you know, does the funding now get reduced in the next step, essentially? So it'd still be a two-step process. It's just because it's allocation night, they're just right on top of each other. Rita, then Dale. Chris. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, Chris. I was just going to make a motion to deny the latest request for an extension. I'll second. The motion has been um, seconded. Um, I had um, Dale has some comments. Y yeah, I, I just want to, I, I, it seemed to me like we were kind of getting off track as to whether or not we we're going to fund them next year or whatever. The, the, the only issue right now is to, to uh, accept or not accept the late extension. So I, I think let's just decide that this is going to be a yes or no. And then the next step is the allocation recommendations. And we can decide then what, what we're going to do with, with them, if, if anything. So, all right. Thank you, Dale. Fred? If we don't accept the extension, and I'm fine with it, but if we vote to not accept the extension, to me that validates their, or it invalidates their application. They no longer have an application. They don't get funding. I mean, even if you gave them points somewhere along the line, if we th if we do not honor the extension, then it's over. Their application is no longer valid. Heather, what is your any guidance in that area? Um, so I can see it both ways. Um, I can see that if the extent. If the extension is not granted, and the rule is you have to have a complete application to be considered for funding, um, I can see the case for um, uh, not funding them. I think the hard thing is the application has already been received, and it's already been scored. It physically exists in the world, and you know, I think um, to say that it wasn't scored, I think, I, I'm not sure how we would do that. Cause I mean, we have all of those pieces of information. I think the funding decision, again, because we're sitting here in March, if we were in January, if you remember, we had accepted a application or um, grant the extension. And then next step, if you don't, are they eligible for funding or are they not? Um, so, but we're here already because already they've applied. So um, I think, I think it, I, I mean, I can see the argument both ways. Um, that's a struggle. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So we have a comment by Fred. And by there, there isn't an application if it's not complete. Mm -hmm. It does not exist. Even if it's been scored, it does not exist if it's incomplete. Mm -hmm. That's the rule. Thank you, Fred. Austin? And I would add that I think a lot of us scored our application under the understanding that they would have their extension mm -hmm. in prior to this meeting, and yeah. they did not do that. Yeah. Uh, All right. Anybody from home? I recommend a roll call. Want we'll to repeat the motion, please? Um, uh, the motion was offered by Miller and seconded by Kiefer. Yes. And it was to deny the request for an audit extension. Bird? Yes. Klassen? Yes. Gilmore? Yes. Hodges? Yes. Holloway? Yes. 
Johnson? Yes. Kiefer? Yes. Lord? No. Miller? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Obleton? Yes. That's it. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. uh, the motion carries. Thank you. Second action item is year 47 CDBG allocation recommendations. Okay. Okay, so um, I am gonna go through a really brief uh, reminder for everyone of how the formula works. Um, Cause we do have a couple of new members and um, it can be a little convoluted. So uh, I am gonna share my screen and we have a handy dandy little graphic for you um, that will help you to see visually uh, how, um, how we go about it. Um, let me see if I can blow this up at all without losing much of it. Um, and those of you who are at home, you should have it in the email. Those of you in the room, you have it on paper and it's on the screen there for everybody. Um, so uh, several years ago, probably about six or seven years ago now, um, the CAC adopted an allocation formula, um, and what it is is a formula calculated recommendation for what the funding would look like um, in the event, uh, you know, what the funding would look like um, if it was awarded according to this process. Uh, the important thing to remember is the formula calculated amounts are just a recommendation. They are not written in stone until the CAC votes upon them. So. Um, and we'll talk about that process here in a minute. So um, kind of how the formula works is uh, we have CAC members who uh, completed their scoring sheets. Uh, so we have 13 CAC members who uh, were scorers um, and they had, we're just using an example of public services here. Um, we have eight public service applications. Each of those applications could receive a maximum of 100 points. So in theory, um, there were 10,400 points that in total, if you consider every point that could possibly be awarded, if every application got 100% of the points from 100% of the CAC members, that's what the pool of points represents. Um, so then if you wanna look at the, the next little chart here, step two, um, we see each little pie slice is the number of points in total that each applicant received but we have this little dotted line pie slice here, which is what we would call the unearned points. And that's because not every application does get 100% of the points from 100% of the CAC members. Um, you know, perfect scores across the board would just never happen. So there's always gonna be some pool of some amount of unawarded points that are available. And in this year, it was about 2000 points that were quote unawarded. Um, so then the formula says, you're gonna get the same slice of pie in dollars as you got in points. So up here are your pie slices of points, up down here are your pie slices of dollars. So you're gonna get at least proportionately the same amount of dollars as you got proportionally the share of points. But again, because not every application receives 100% of the score from 100% of the CAC members, um, there's gonna be unearned dollars in the same proportion as there were unearned points. You can see those are the same. So then what the formula does is it goes back and it awards those unawarded dollars um, in these little dotted line pie slices to the highest scoring applications first. So the highest scoring one gets the most of the dotted pie slice and then each one successively gets smaller. The only exception to this is if um, uh, the formula won't award more dollars than were requested by any particular agency. So in this example, you see there's a pretty big pie slice for the highest scoring and then a smaller one for the next highest scoring and that's because they reached their cap. So this is how the formula works. Um, and then, uh, so visually, this is what it would look like, but um, in dollars, this is what it would look like. So what happens is um, there's a requested amount by each applicant. We're looking down here at the public services, just for example, it's easier with them. Um, each, each applicant requested a certain number of dollars um, and then they received a share of the points. So you can see um, the highest scorer was Project Renewal. 
and they received 10.68% uh, of the points, and it goes down from there. Um, and then they got an equivalent amount, equivalent share of dollars. So 10.68% of the dollars available is 29,912. So these are equal in share. But then we go back through and we award um, additional dollars to each of the applicants from the highest scoring down. And you can see Project Renewal got 9,000 additional dollars. Um, the second highest scoring, Friendly House, only got 5,000 additional dollars, but that's because they reached their cap. You can see that they requested quite a bit less than um, the applicants above and below it. So they got less dollars. But if you exclude them, uh, just for uh, to see the descending points, we went from 9,000, 8,000, 7,000, less, less, less. It just gets a smaller amount of those extra dollars on down the row until they're all awarded. So then we add that initial share plus your additional funds awarded and you get your total calculated award. And that is what this is over here. Um, and you can see with the exception of the one applicant that uh, reached their cap, um, everybody else, it's descending dollar amounts. So that is how the formula works. Um, uh, it basically rank orders them and then award funds accordingly. Uh, over here in this column, you can see, um, we also ask on the scoring sheet, should this applicant be funded? That was a column added at the request of the CAC maybe four or five years ago, um, because the trick about the formula is it assumes every applicant is going to get some money. If they get even one point, they'll get some money under the formula. It just, that's the way that the formula works. Because again, it's a recommendation, it's a sample. It's not the end result. It's just a starting place for discussions that you can accept in whole, reject in whole, or make changes to um, through the process. So how you would make changes to this is um, if there's a determination that there should be funding removed or added to any applicants, um, what you have to keep in mind is the public service cap. So these on the bottom are separate because HUD has capped the amount we can spend in public services. So no more than 280,000 can be spent in this category next year. So when you want to move money around in between these public services, you can do it within this category. So you can move it from one public service applicant to another public service applicant, or you can move it from this category out and into a non-public service applicant, but you cannot move money from a non-public service up here at the top down to the bottom. Um, so that's just because HUD has established a cap for that. So um, over here, it shows how many members voted no to funding. Um, and then, but the formula again is going to award it if you were, received any points at all. Um, so that is uh, how the formula works. Now, up here at the top, you can see that we have these lines that say must be voted upon by CAC. They cannot be calculated um, before uh, the CAC votes on it. And that's because these applicants um, for administration of the programs um, are not scored. Uh, and that's just because they're not programs in the sense of any other program. They're just the cost of delivering the programs. And so some years ago, the CAC decided that w those applicants still needed to request funding on an annual basis, um, but we do it via a memo rather than uh, a full application. And the CAC at the allocation meeting votes upon a dollar amount for those. And once they do, the scored um, applicants in the non-publics category, the formula will kick in and calculate for them um, the same as it does for the public services, just within their pool of money. Uh, so that's kind of the, the Cliff's notes on how the formula works and what the calculated amounts of the formula are. So we can display for you the public services, but we can't yet display the non-public services until the CAC decides to vote. Um, so the process for this is we need a series of motions. And so you at home have this document. Uh, you in person also have it in paper copy. Um, and so what we need is a series of um, votes. 
the first one is to decide if we're going to address public services or non-public services first. Uh, then once that decision is made, we move into that category. Whichever category we go into, um, we'll discuss the applicants um, from the top scoring down. And at any time, a CAC member can propose a change to the funding amount. Again, those motions to change funding need to identify what agency you're taking the money from, what agency you're giving the money to, and the reason for the change. Um, and then those motions have to pass on a two thirds majority vote uh, to move money around. Um, and that's true in both the public services and the non-public services category. Um, in the non-public services, there are a couple of extra nuances um, that we can cover when we get to the public, the non-public services. Um, essentially, as I mentioned, you do have to vote on um, a recommended amount for the planning and admin and the rehab admin. And then um, uh, we may have a situation where there's additional funds to award and we can discuss that when we get there. I think it's easier just to do that once we get to that section. And then also in that category, there's the issue of public or program income that has to be addressed. So once both categories have been dealt with separately, we get to the end um, and the, I'll display the, what we call the full slate of recommendations. Um, we'll put them up on the screen and the CAC will take a final vote to recommend the full slate. Um, then we also need a vote <laughs> for the plus or minus. So if the allocation amounts change, um, to give us permission to make small adjustments if necessary. Um, and then that will be the end of your evening. <laughs> so not too much to ask, I don't think. Maybe four or five motions in total, hopefully. But um, uh, that, that's the steps. So I just wanted to kind of cover it pretty thoroughly because I know we have a few new members. Um, but you have these sheets at your table and those of you at home have them electronically. Uh, that you can use to um, kind of guide you through the process. And then we as staff are here to help you as well. Um, so I'm gonna put the scores back up here um, just so that you, or the uh, calculated amounts. Um, if you wanna take a moment and look at them further, you have them at your tables, you have them at home. Um, I also have the spreadsheet I can put up when you're ready for me to put up the spreadsheet. Just let me know. Thank you, Chris. We'll start with Okay. I would just like to uh, dispense with the, the issue of whether or not we even keep family resources um, in the meld here. I'd like to make a motion that since their application is incomplete, they are removed from consideration. Yes, I would recommend that, yes. So, um, Joseph? I want to make a motion that we address the public Had it. Our services first. It's been a motion for, to address the services first. And second. second. Fred? Chris? I had a question. Uh, oh. I, Heather, the, the amount, is that just a, an estimated amount again this time? For the public services? Well, for everything. I mean, we um, don't, oh, no, actually, have we heard from uh, HUD is my uh, question. We did hear from HUD on okay. Friday morning. We heard from HUD. It was a very exciting day. Um, for only the second time in my almost 12 years with the city has HUD announced the allocation amounts in time for us to do our allocation without using an estimate. So, um, so these are real figures. These are real then. figures. Okay, thank you. That's Subject what I to, to change. Know. I mean, they, HUD could still make small adjustments. Um, in fact, Last year was the first year in almost 12 years that they announced them on time, but then they later adjusted it by $277. So um, out of you know, 1.6 million, $277, very important change. So I made that change just according to the plus or minus rule that, that you all passed. So, um, but no, these are actual allocation amounts. Um, the grant that's been awarded to the city for next year would be 1.6 or 1,638,026. dollars um, out of that, the estimate of public services is $280,000. And the reason that's still an estimate, even though we have the actual grant amount, is that it includes po program income for the year we're in now. So the year isn't complete. We don't know how much program income we're gonna earn. We do know it's been less than in prior years because COVID. Um, so 
the public service amount is still an estimate. We estimate conservatively, and we think it's safe to make a level funding estimate of 280,000. Um, our grant as a whole is 40,000 higher. Um, our, public, our, our public services, we're estimating at level funding um, because our program income has gone down by more than our grant is going up. So, um, so we are estimating level funding for public services. Chris? Okay, I'll make my motion now that a uh, fam- we, we haven't voted We've yet. We've got a motion on the floor, we gotta vote oh. first. <laughs> And remember, all votes are roll call on allocation night. So call the question. Klassen? Uh, could you repeat the motion just to be sure? Is, is to dis uh, discuss uh, non the public first. Address public services first. Thank you. I vote yes. Gilmore? Yes. Hodges? Yes. Holloway? Yes. Um, Johnson R? Yes. Kiefer? Yes. Lord? Yes. Miller? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Obleton? Yes. Bird? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Now, now we will. I make a motion some. that family resource application be removed from consideration due to being incomplete. May I make a comment about that? Go ahead. This is, this is Nancy. After the explanation about how all the scoring is done, it almost, is, it almost appears to me that as they go through this process, they'll self-eliminate or reduce their funding to such a point because of lack of qualification that it organically takes care of it itself. I, I don't, do we have a hardcore deadline for every, they, they have a deadline, right? When they're sent an invitation for their RFP for the funding, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Do we have a stipulation in there that if they don't turn it in, no considerations, do we have a, a statement overall? Um, so in this case, um, the, um, the timing was, I think, um, of note this year, and that is because the applications were due um, shortly before December 30th. Um, so the request for audit extension did not come until actually um, they were past the November 1st deadline for audit extension. They should have turned in the audit extension then, but they didn't. They didn't tell us that the audit was going to be late until the audit was due, basically. Um, and in that time, the applications had already been submitted. Uh, so the timing was not ordinary this year just because of the way the dates fell. Um, and so that was where the recommendation was made to um, submit an audit, audit extension request late to the CAC, which the CAC considered in January um, for the first time. And so, um, Yes, they have a deadline, but their audit, um, their application was due before their audit was essentially. And that's kind of how we have found ourselves in this situation. Okay, because we had an exceptional year. Uh, yes, we did. We did. And the dates, okay. every few years, the dates fall this way. And obviously, this is the very first time we've had an audit um, come in late since we've had the audit extension policy. So, um, you know, the exception proves the rule, I guess, that <laughs> nothing quite works out the way you think it will. Okay. Well, the point that I do make, though, is that in the questions for the evaluation, it does include if they meet that criteria. So they could mm -hmm. be heavily, they, they lose all those points 
So if straight across the board they lose all those points, they organically dissolve themselves or reduce their amount. It, it's kind of set up that way. So that if, if they don't meet the criteria, they don't get awarded the points. So I guess that's just another way I think of looking at it. Thank, thank you. So, okay. Thank you so much. We have Dale go next, please. Okay, but but when I scored it, I assumed that they were going to that they were going to have their audit in by the February fifth or whatever it was deadline. Uh, yeah. And now since they didn't make that, you know, you, you score it before the deadline, and you know that's what happens. So I don't. I, I can see your point, but I can also. You know, I, I assumed that they were going to have the audit in because they, they, they didn't have it in by December, they didn't have it in by January, and that they would have it in by, by February. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think that the delay would be probably another year before it really got caught up in the, the, that they self-destructed. So, thank you. Thank you, Dan. We'll go with Elizabeth. Because I've been on the committee for such a long time, I have a little bit of history, and Joe might even remember this, but many years ago, there was an agency, little different scenario, they were not happy with the amount that they were awarded, which is one of the reasons we have the scoring system we do today, which has been very successful. That agency went to the city council, because in the end, they've got the ultimate say. So they turned around and gave them additional money. Now that agency actually no longer comes through the CAC, they go through the city budget. And one of my concerns is, and you know, that's one of the luxuries we have, we can say, okay, $5,000, but you better get your act together, is if they come to the city and say, we got nothing, the city could say, okay, well, and this is a scenario may never happen, it could happen, and say, okay, Heather, we want you to take 5,000 from each agency and give it to them. So I just want you to think, it doesn't stop with us, we are just a recommendating committee but because I've been here long enough and I saw how that one kind of slid through, which didn't make it right to the committee, but it is what it is, is politics in the end. And so that, I just want to give you a little food for thought. I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong, it's just history. Thank you, we have chat. Yeah, I just want to say that I called in early February, because it was February 8th, they were supposed to have it in. I called and found out they did not have it in. So I scored them zero. Now the other people, everybody else scored them. And if we go through with the funding that's recommended, they would get $28,825 for an incomplete application. Their application is invalid. We voted not to accept an extension. Therefore they have no application and they should get zero. Thank you, chat. Yeah, I just reaffirmed that I agree with Dale on that. that I scored my application on the basis that they would have the audit in, and obviously don't. They don't, so it's invalid. I I agree. Do we have anyone at home? Not recall the question. So on this motion, um, Gilmore. So, so family resource, we have a, a motion on the table by Miller, seconded by Obleton. Family resources is removed because the application is incomplete. Is that? Yeah. Okay, so we'll go back. Sorry, we'll go back here. Um, Gilmore? Yes. Hodges? No. Holloway? Yes. Johnson R? No. Kiefer? Yes. Lord? No. Miller? Yes. Nolan? Repeat the question again, please. Um, the question is that uh, the motion is that family resources will be removed because the application is incomplete. Um. Would you like us to no. circle back to you, Nancy? Well, like a circle back. Okay. We're, we're paying to you. Um, Obleton? I'm sorry, could you say yes? Did you say yes? yes. yes. Okay. okay. Bird? 
Yes. Klassen? Yes. We're going to come back to Nolan. Um, I'm going to say no. Seven, I'd need eight for two thirds and it doesn't pass. Uh, so the motion does not pass. I would need eight because um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the yes, one, two, three, four on the no. Thank you. Eight. All right. I entertain a motion. The next is to score the entire um, non-public sector. So uh, we have had a motion to consider public services first, mm -hmm. um, which we are mm -hmm. in that process now. So the next step, I'm going to move over here to the spreadsheet so we can um, see it in Excel version because as everyone knows, Excel is my favorite thing. Okay, so we are doing the public services. So I had to condense this a little bit for the screen. So um, these are all the same applicants in the same order as on your um, printout. Um, and just so you can see uh, the calculations and how we arrived at them, uh, this first column is what they requested. Um, the second column is, again, that same percentage. Uh, the dollars that are equivalent to the points earned. The additional funds that were awarded to the high scoring applications um, in descending order of percents. Um, and then whatever's left after that step is divided equally, which arrives at, um, let me get my mouse here so I can point, uh, your total initial award. Um, but you can see uh, we have to evaluate if that award is over anybody's requested amount. And in the case of Friendly House, they only re requested 35. Their initial award would have been 38. So we had to reduce their amount to bring them down to their request. And then those dollars were distributed amongst the other applicants evenly, um, except if I get down to just a dollar or two, high or low, I award it to the higher, take it away from the low because I can't divide $2. <laughs> eight ways. Um, and so that's that. And so this comes down to our total calculated award, um, which is the recommendation that the formula would make. Um, but this is the point in the game at which we'll go from the top to the bottom. So the chair will read off the top um, and ask if anybody has any changes they would like to make. And if not, we'll move on to the next and the next and the next. If you do have a change you want to propose, remember that you have to identify the agency you're taking money from, the agency you're giving money to, and the reason for the change, and the vote. The motion would have to pass on a two-thirds majority vote. So do we go through them one by one, or can we make a motion to change something right now? Or. Um, you can. Um, I would point out that in past years, um, I have gotten feedback from some members that when they're not in, when they're not addressed in an order, um, and we jump around a little bit, it can be hard to follow. So I would propose that just for for clarity's sake, it might be good to follow the process. But I mean, that's only a recommendation. It's the CAC's decision. Thank you, Chad. We have Fred. Uh, I have a question. Um, a simple majority would be, or excuse me, the two-thirds majority would be 7.26. Do we have to round up for yes. that? Yes, we do. I did a sidebar with her, like, maybe five minutes before, same purpose. Yeah, it's the same math that we would use to determine a quorum, um, is that if it comes up to a percent, you have to round up. If it comes up to any percent, you got to round up? Yeah, if it's anything more than a whole number, you go up to the next whole number. Did you, someone have something in addition they want to, oh, Joseph, please. Um, 
We can't hear. Oh. How do we Um, the question was, uh, how would we address it if we have family resources zeroed out? Um, for those who don't have a screen up in front of them, family resources is the lowest scoring. So if the applicants are going to be addressed from the top down, they would be the last ones that would be discussed. And if there would be a change to their funding, um, you know, for the sake of example, if there would be a reduction of their funding, uh, the motion would say, um, we're going to propose removing X amount of dollars from family resources and moving that those same amount of dollars to this other agency with a stated reason. And then we would vote for 10,000, we would vote for a two thirds majority vote, which would be a core with a number of eight votes in favor. So that's how that process would work. And that's the same for any um, change that you would wanna make top to bottom. Keeping in mind their cap, yes, Don has a good point. We can't award um, any applicant, well, I mean, we couldn't award an applicant more than what they had requested. So you can see over here on the far right column, that is how much room there is under their request. So that's their request in this first example of 47,520. The calculated award is 39,644. The amount left before they would reach their request in this case is 7,876. So the math is there so you can see if there's room to move money to them or not. Okay. Does that answer your question, Joseph? Yes, it does. Okay, any questions at home uh, from anybody about how the process would work? It's hard because we can't see you, so I just wanna make sure no one's confused. <laughs> okay, Fritz. Is there a minimum amount that somebody that gets points gets awarded? Um, the formula will not award less than $5,000. Okay. Um, the CAC can and has in the past um, uh, reduced, uh, I'm thinking of one particular- I would make a motion that we re reallocate- before, before we do that, Austin had one thing and then we'll get okay. back to you. Go ahead, Austin. I was just gonna say briefly, uh, I, I'm on board with you know, us going in order, but maybe we should work from the bottom up rather than the top down just for the sake of how our discussion has gone tonight. I would make a motion that we reallocate $23,825 from family resources and we spread it out through the upper levels according to the formula. I second. Um, and let's just, I just would like to remind you not to move too fast because Dawn has to get her motion and I have to get the math. So just just a reminder, we're just humans here. <laughs> Certainly. So, so it was minus 23,825. And for those of you at home and in the room, I, I'm displaying the math on the screen just so you can see it. It doesn't mean it's final. It's just so you can see what the calculation would look like. Should have rounded up. <laughs> Hold on, I messed something up for just a second. I went the wrong direction with my math. <laughs> May we have a little conversation in the meantime? Oh, yes, please do. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm just taking a moment myself. Okay, this is Reagan and my home. Um, I just want to just comment on this. I, I am, I'm, I'm liking the direction of, of where you're going here. Um, my only comment would be 
dividing it equally amongst the others, uh, with Salvation Army also scoring very low and being the fact that two members thought that they shouldn't be funded at all, I wonder if we should be awarding them additional funding. Um, my thought process was similar to Fred's as um, taking a, a rather large chunk from family resources and putting our top um, five, I guess it would be friendly houses already at 100%, but it would make our one, two, three, four, top five um, at 100% of their request versus dividing it evenly amongst everybody. Okay, Dale? Okay. I, I, I think I can simplify this easily. If you look on the request line, the total public service request is 315,717. If you subtract 36,050, you come out with 279,667. So what, what my calculations say is that we could fund everybody fully and have $333 left that we could add to the non-public total. Does that make sense? Say the first part again. Okay, if you, if you look at the far left column, the request, uh -huh. the, the bottom number is 315,717. Okay. If you subtract 36,050, that comes up with 279,667. Now, if the calculated award is 280, you take 280 minus 279,667, leaves $333 that we can uh, move up to uh, non-public service. And then totally fund every organization. Okay. I mean, that, that, maybe that's oversimplification, but that's, okay. that's math. <laughs> I think I can order chat and then. No, I totally agree with that, but I see I'm with Reagan here. I think the one, the top five should be fully funded. And then if you have leftover, you go that to the non-public services. I mean, they were very low scoring after the, you know, the top five, well, six, but and people voted not to fund them. So I think the top five should be fully funded and whatever you have left over could go to the uh, non-public services is, is how I see it. I don't know. Okay, for it. Yeah, the motion was to fund according to the formula. So that's gonna not give everybody the same amount. It's gonna give the top five more and everybody else progressively less. So we're not giving Salvation Army $5,000 and everybody else $5,000. It's not gonna work that way. Uh, the motion was to fund according to the formula. Thank you. So I had something I had thought about, and this must be, this may be a little more tedious, but I think if we went group by group, so Project Renewal, they are down uh, $7,876. May take a few more steps, but if we succinctly take like that amount from if we if we chose you know um, family resources, then we can kind of award the top rankers accordingly. It may take a little bit longer, but I think it'd be a much more step by step process to award each each organization um, how we may see fit. Uh, I mean. It it's up to the group how you want to yeah. proceed. I would just say that we have a motion on the floor that either needs to be voted upon, amended, or withdrawn. Yeah. And you, have, you haven't put it up there yet? Yeah, it's because I there's a lot of numbers. It's hard to do. Yeah, but it was 23, not 25. Oh, it was 23. It was 28, okay. 3825. All right. I was going to leave you 5,000. No, nope. okay. 28, not 23. You, but you wanted to leave them 5,000. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Okay. That was my initial plan. Okay. But I can amend it. Nope, that's okay. So then, yeah, I just would like to see how then that, that money is to be done. Okay. Because it seems like by the formula that, or at least what I saw earlier, they were all getting an equal amount. All right, just. Um, they're pretty close if you got 10 points. You know, we're within point, you know, half a percentage on each of them, so. Just trying to do it, 4138. 
So the problem, I mean, not problem, but why this is taking so long is because people, you know, agencies are hitting their requested amount, which changes how you have to distribute it. Mm -hmm. So it'll just take yeah. a moment, just Let's a moment. Let's go in sequence. <laughs> The original um, motion on the table is to adjust the remaining um, agencies by formula. It would take us to, um, we'd have to, an amendment to that motion or like um, Heather said, withdraw that to then just um, address the top five. So right now we're still in that original motion. I did miss somebody. No, I didn't, because they're kept out. That's why. That's why this isn't coming out. So let me do this. Is it possible for me to withdraw my second? Y yes. Because I do like the way Reagan is thinking, and we have had issues with Salvation Army not using the money they are rewarded. I guess I just have a problem with giving Salvation Army more considering two people voted and they were late on their application and you saw the application, all the spelling. It, it was, so I mean, I just, I just have a problem giving them more now that we're family resource money where I'd rather give the other agencies. Let's, let's look and see what it is. They need to so this, this would be the outcome of the motion that is on the floor. Four agencies would end up fully funded, um, and uh, three agencies would have a few thousand left not funded, and family resources would receive five thousand. So, if you'd if you'd like to move the five thousand seven hundred that's going to Salvation up and take care of those other two now that we see that, that's that three thousand. I'm fine with that. And if you want to move those, make a motion to amend the, I'm fine with it. I'll even second your amendment. <laughs> because they're actually getting awarded the most out of anyone. Yeah, yeah. because they, they were the most, you know? the least right. rounded. Right. So if you want to take the 2,173 and move it up, and you want to take the 1,314 and move it up, take those amounts away from them, I'm fine with that. I but let's do it one motion at a time. So... According to the existing standard for motions, um, you need to identify where you're taking it from, which you have, where you're putting it to, which, I mean, you've given the logic and I've done the numbers for you. So that's what would be on the screen there. I'm gonna click save just in case nothing bad happens. <laughs> um, uh, so that would, be, um, that would be what it would look like. And then the why, I don't think you stated the why in your motion. I think we know the why, but I think you should state your reasoning. You want the reasoning from me? Yeah, for the motion. Okay, because I feel that they have an invalid application. That's why. Okay. Um, and then, um, so then a step to accomplish what I think you're trying to say would be to vote on this motion. Two-thirds majority vote would carry it. Then if there was a feeling amongst the group to make another motion to change the funding award um, to another agency that resulted from this change, um, that would follow the same process. Does that make sense to everybody? If we don't, okay. if we don't do the first motion, then the second motion doesn't need to happen. Um, is, is, is there a motion on the table or do you, we, do we restate the motion? So you, so you can vote on the one that's on the floor and then take a second motion to make the second change that you want to make. Or, we need a second to vote on the one that's on the floor. Yeah, or make, um, make an amendment to your motion to change the agency you want to change additionally 
and do it all in one motion. I would propose for clarity, you may want to just vote on the motion, if you can get a second, vote on the motion on the floor and then make an additional change if that's what the group chooses to do. Okay, so we now have a second from Obleton. So the motion on the floor is um, made by Klassen, seconded by Obleton. Dawn, do you wanna read it? Sorry, we're going to um, remove all but $5,000 from family resources. We're going to address it by formula to the other agencies. Um, reasoning why is family resources um, had an invalid application um, as why from Klassen. Okay. Let me get ready. I got a lot going on here. Okay. Um, Hodges. Yes. Holloway. Yes. Johnson R. Yes. Kiefer. Yes. Lord. No. Miller. Yes. Nolan. I'm sorry, Nolan. Oh, sorry, no. Obleton? Yes. Bird? Yes. Klassen? Yes. Gilmore? Yes. That passes. And so then I think your group had decided you were going to address the applicants from the lowest scoring to on up. So um, if you want to uh, move on up the row as chair, then that would be the next step. This, this is Reagan at home. Yes. I would like to make another motion to take $2,173 from the additional funding of 5704 that was awarded to Salvation Army in the last motion. And also award $1,314 to Vera French from the same amount from Salvation Army. So I believe that make sense? Yes, it does. I'm gonna put the math up on the screen so you can see it and you tell me if it was your intention. Okay. I'm doing it without equal signs first so that you can see it. Mm -hmm. So that would be the math that you're trying to accomplish, right? Correct. And then if I equal sign it, um, oops, gone too far. Um, that would be the the resulting. Um, that would be the result of the math. For purposes of discussion, I will second that motion. Do you have it? Yep. Okay. Um, and just in case anybody at home does not have um, a screen in front of them, uh, the result of that motion was to fully fund the top one, two, three, four, five, six um, applications are fully funded, and the bottom two scorers, which are Salvation Army and Family Resources. Um, are funded at less than their request. Uh, Salvation Army is about $5,000 less than their request. And then Family Resources, because of our previous motion, um, still would have only an award of $5,000 um, due to the, the previous change that was made. Motion made and second. Any questions? I like where we're going with this, but I still think that 2217, that Salvation Army, should be moved to the non-public. I just, 
I just have a hard time giving them that. It was a late application. It was terrible. The grammatics. I don't know. Yeah, you can have multiple motions for the same agency if you would choose. If you want to address the motion on the floor and then make a second. I agree with everything that we've, yeah, but the extra 2217, I just, mm -hmm. I'd rather move to non-public than the word than that. Okay, that's up to the chair. If, if someone wants to call the question on the floor and then... Okay, and then we'll move to the next. So we, we'll the call the question on accepting Reagan's motion and second. Okay, so call the question. Don um, Holloway. Yes. Johnson R. Yes. Kiefer. Yes. Lord. No. Miller. Yes. Nolan. Yes. Fobleton? No. Bird? Yes. Classen? Yes. Gilmore? Yes. Hodges? Yes. It passes. Thank you. Do I entertain any additional motions? I'll make a motion to move the extra $2,217 to the non-public services from Salvation Army to non-public services. Second. Gilmore. Gilmore. Um, Brett? Yeah, I'm gonna have to vote no on this one because I was one of the people that said it's a terribly written uh, grant application and it was, it was very poorly written. However, it's been a really tough year for them, especially with the red kettle and all that stuff, not being able to do what they would have normally done. And uh, I just think that they probably did the best they could with what they had, even though it wasn't very good. So I'm, I, I'm gonna vote no, but go ahead. That doesn't matter to me. Heather? Um, I do want to note we have not gotten there yet because um, we are dealing with the public services, but when we get to the non-public service section, um, again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, HUD has announced our grant award this year, which is not standard um, or hasn't been for several years. And now that they have announced it, um, what I can tell you is that the amount of funding available in the non-public services is, a, is when we get there is about $14,000 more than what has been requested in that category. So once that category is reached, um, the CAC will have a decision to make already about awarding additional funding into the non-public services. Um, just, I, it's neither here nor there to the discussion, but I just did wanna mention it to foreshadow that there's, there's already gonna be a little bit more money than had been requested in that category as it stands. and. You know, we're free to add to that from the public services, but I just did want to make everybody aware um, of the math that's coming up in the next section. Thank you, Heather. Any other questions, comments? Roll call. Johnson R. No. Kiefer? Yes. Lord? No. Miller. Yes. Nolan. Please repeat the question. Um, so we have a motion on the table to move $2,217 from Salvation Army to the non-public services. No. Obleton. No. Bird. No. Classen? No. Gilmore? Yes. Hodges? Yes. Holloway? No. What was that? Doesn't pass. The motion does not pass.
Thank you. Like to entertain any additional motions, Dale? Yeah, I, I would move that we accept the uh, adjusted uh, allocations as posted. A second. Second. Any questions, discussion? So basically what I'm saying is that we're not gonna make any more adjustments. Basically what I'm saying is second. <laughs> 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 any additional questions or, or comments? Okay. Don, roll call. Okay. You got it. Um, Kiefer? No. Lord? What's the amount that we're voting on? Uh, we're, we're, we're voting to accept it as it stands on the screen, I do believe. Okay, because I'm not seeing it on the screen. Or you mean the total amount available in public services or? Well, I guess, I guess I'm confused of what we're even voting for. Uh, a motion was made um, to uh, accept the posted amounts for the public services uh, without any other additional changes. Oh, okay. No, my answer is no. Miller? No. Nolan? No. Fobleton? Yes. Bird? Yes. Lawson? Yes. Gilmore? Yes. Hodges? Yes. Holloway? Yes. R. Johnson? Yes. We have seven. We don't have enough. Uh, the motion does not pass. I entertain any additional motions on adjustments to the public service sector. Are there any motions? Joseph Olgleton. Joseph is asking, is this an issue with the Salvation Army? Do you have a comment on that? That's why I voted no, yes. Fred? If that motion already has failed, then we need a different motion if we're going to continue to discuss something because uh, if there's no changes to make, then we should have approved it. If somebody has a change to make, somebody that voted no, then we're open to hearing it. Can we take, can I put a motion on that we revote and restate the actual question that we're voting on again? Go ahead. Or Don. Um, are, are you talking about the last motion that we just voted upon or because there is no motion currently on the floor? No, the one we just voted on. Oh, to restate the motion and, and, and vote a second time. Is that what you're requesting? Yeah, restate the motion. Yeah, Okay, please. so we can restate the motion, but then if there's a desire to have a second vote, someone would need to move that same item and second that same item again, and then it could be voted upon mm -hmm. again. Right. Uh, so, Don, do you want to state the motion? Uh, to accept um, the public services as we currently have them posted on the screen. And I have, I guess, um, would be um, R. Johnson making that motion. I'd need a second, I believe. Correct? I'll second. Is that right? I mean, R. Johnson made it the first time. Didn't she just right now? I, I did start it. I think that, um, was it Gail that seconded me for Gail? Second? Dale did, yes. And for, for everyone's knowledge, I am getting some chat messages regarding uh, being able to hear Joseph and I apologize. For some reason, we cannot get the microphone over the table. 
to turn on. It should be picking him up and it's not. Um, but we can, um, we'll continue to try to restate him. Otherwise, um, if you want to move Joseph to this microphone down here, if you feel comfortable, will that go to him? Uh, we're trying to fix this situation. Try it now. Try it now, Chris. Joseph, go ahead and try it. Go ahead and, and tap it or tap the mic. What's going on down there? Yeah, go to there, but it should be plugged in somewhere. Yeah, it looks like it's on, but it's definitely not. Well, <laughs> otherwise, test that one at the end, on. Does that one work? The city attorney one? No, you have to come over here. Yeah. I think um, we do know that the one here at the city attorney's spot, Joseph, if you just want to move over here and then people can hear you. Is that okay with you, Don? Sorry. We're just getting, getting organized here. So this is, if you just want to sit over here with me, you'll be able to talk that way. Yep. Go ahead, Jill. Testing, testing. Okay. We can't hear you, Heather. Reagan, you had made the motion, and Joseph, did you second the motion? Yes. Yes, Joseph seconded it. Uh, he's in the process of moving chairs, so um, if there's, uh, it's back to the the chair to decide if there's discussion or if he wants the roll call. Roll call, please. Okay. We're voting on the restating of the. Motion that recently failed. Is that correct? Don, if you want to read it. Yeah. Correct. So we have a motion to restate the um, previous motion to accept for public services what is posted on the screen. And we do have a second on that. So just as a point of order, and, and I don't know how particular we are with Roberts, but I've been a parliamentarian for years. If you want to reconsider the motion, it has to be. There has to be a call for reconsideration by someone who voted in the negative. Oh, okay. Thank you. That's good. I didn't know that. <laughs> so, and I believe that was Nancy, right? Or that no? is correct. Yes, it was me. And I think I was kind of uh, heading to that direction as wanting to request a motion for a revote and a re-explanation of a, a, a restatement of what that motion was. Oh. Okay. And basically, that what we see on the screen is what we're accepting, yes or no, yes. for this. This is public funding. Yes, correct. Okay. Correct. If somebody votes no on this one, I mean, that's fine, vote no. But you, you need to have something to replace it with because it's this is kind of like getting it done or we're going to go on to another change. That's where we are. Discussion at all? Okay, Don, please. That, that gets us where we need to be, right, Dale? Yep, yep. Okay. Okay. Lord? Um, no. Miller? No. Nolan? Yes. Obleton? Yes. Bird? Yes. Classen? Yes. Gilmore? Yes. Hodges? Yes. Holloway? Yes. R. Johnson? Yes. Kiefer? No. Okay. The motion passes. Thank you. I will entertain the next motion. 
uh, we would just be moving on to non-public services. There's not a motion needed to move on to it. Um, the next uh, decision point for the group will be um, when we come into this non-public service uh, category here um, is that um, uh, the two applications the, for planning and admin and the housing rehab staff are not scored applications. Uh, so this BAC will need to vote on a dollar amount um, to fund those two applications. Um, and then we can move on to consideration of the one scored application in the non-public service category. Are there any discussion or motions? I'll make a motion to fully fund the requested amount for the planning and admin and, admin and housing rehab staff. I'll second it. Okay. Okay. Uh, the motion is made by Keeper and seconded by Hodges. Um, the motion is to uh, fully fund the request for planning and administration and housing rehab staff and supplies. Is there any discussion? Don? Yep. Uh, Miller? Yes. Nolan? Nolan? Um, sorry, Nolan? Let's go back. back. Yep. Ovalton? Yes. Bird? Yes. Klassen? Yes. Gilmore? Yes. Hodges? Yes. Holloway? Yes. Johnson R? Yes. Keeper? Yes. Lord? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Pass. Uh, the motion passes. Thank you. Okay. And with that, um, you see here, same as we discussed in the planning and admin, um, that uh, the housing rehab gets uh, an, a, an amount of dollars that are equivalent to the percentage of points that it earned. Um, additional funds are awarded to the high scoring applicants. And I would remind you here, this is the only scored applicant in the uh, non-public service category this year because the economic development fund did not request uh, additional funding this year. So it's one application in this category that is scored. Um, so when you total those items up, um, uh, we uh, come up to a total calculated award of $730,000. Um, however, as a reminder, uh, HUD has announced our grant funding this year. So we do know how much is available in the non-public services. Um, and it is this 1.358 figure. Uh, when you total up all of the requests, uh, even when they're fully funded, it comes to 1343, which means that there are $14,381 that are not awarded by the formula because the formula as it stands won't, won't award more than um, an agency has requested. And so in this case, when it's happened before, and it has happened in the past from time to time, um, not often, but it has happened, is uh, the CAC has, in those circumstances, um, held a vote to allow uh, a, a non-public service applicant to be funded more than its request. And for those of our new um, members, just as a reminder, this is possible in the non-public service category because there is no cap on this category set by HUD. In the public service category, there is a cap and it's competitive. So um uh it's a different circumstance so uh in order to um award this funding um there would need to be a motion to allow one of the um, non-public service requests to be funded one or more i guess i should say 
more than their request. And from a staff perspective, I will tell you the planning and administration is capped, so we would not recommend awarding it there. Um, housing rehab staff, um, we do feel has sufficient funding um, at our requested amount, and we do thank you for the motion to fully fund there. Um, so awarding additional funds to the housing rehabilitation and neighborhood revitalization fund would just enable additional projects to be done in that category. That would be the same types of projects that were in the application, which would include housing rehabilitation, um, emergency repairs, uh, accessibility improvements, and down payment. I would make a motion that we put the, the extra money into the housing rehab and neighborhood. I'll, I'll second it. That was Nancy. Any discussion at all? Don, this is, I mean, oh, no. where is that 14,000 coming from? Um, it is, uh, so the formula will only award dollars up to the requested amount for each applicant. And in this year, the total of the requested amount is less than the total amount that is available to fund in the non-public services. So that is where the 14,000 came from. It's um, essentially, the difference between what was requested in the non-public service category and what HUD awarded in the non-public service category. Okay, so this isn't coming from the public services? No, it is not. The public services okay. were funded to the capped amount, um, to the estimated capped amount of $280,000. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, I, I think go ahead, Dale. Yeah, I, I, and in, I, this is germane to the motion, but why doesn't the non-public service always ask for more, and then we give them less than what they ask for, but it balances our budget? I mean, it, it, you know, it, it maybe that you know th that's something that we don't need to address now, but that might no. be something that you might talk to Mr. Berger or whomever about. So, hey, just up your request, and you're not going to get it all, but but we'll. Yeah. Uh, and I can appreciate that. And I, and I will say we did actually have that conversation this year and we thought our request was sufficient. I mean, it's pretty high, but uh, we're fortunate that HUD um, increased our grant this year more than we were expecting. We were told to expect level funding and it went up by about 40,000. So if you think that our grant went up 40,000, but there's only 14,000 unaccounted for, we, we came real close, but we didn't quite make it this year. Okay, whatever. I mean, just to... <laughs> Just an idea. Thank no, you. and I appreciate it. And we do put consideration. It's just, you know, you're looking into a crystal ball sometimes. <laughs> okay. uh, Nolan? Oh, um, yes. Bubbleton? Yes. Bird? Yes. Classen? Yes. Gilmore? Yes. Hodges? Yes. Holloway? Yes. Johnson R? Yes. Kiefer? Yes. Lord? Yes. Miller? Yes. Passes. Okay. Okay. So thank you for that. Um, let me move that up into the right column. Click save so we don't lose anything. <laughs> okay, so um, there's one more non-public service motion uh, that will be needed uh, before we move on to approving the full slate. Um, and that is the request from the Economic Development Fund um, to utilize uh, a portion of the program income that they earn towards their um, staff costs. Uh, for the upcoming year, they've requested to use $48,897 um, towards their staff costs. Now, this is not new money coming in from HUD. This is program income that's earned on their loan fund. Um, and so several years ago, uh, the request was made from the CAC to approve these requests annually along with the rest of them. So um, we will, would, if, if the group would choose to entertain this request, we would need a motion to award that funding. I would so move, but I have a question. Yeah. Um, is that the one that just got the 14,000 extra? No, 
Okay. Um, the 14,000 extra is for the housing rehab and neighborhood revitalization. Okay. Um, this is a request for program income for the economic development staff and okay. supplies. I, I move that we do that for the economic development. Right, I, I wanted to have some discussion. Go ahead. I had some questions. Let's move a second. Discussion. Did you get the second? We didn't get the second. I got a second. There's a second. Keeper. Second. Now you do the second. If it's not moved to the salaries, then is does it stay in the loan fund? Yes. Um, all program income uh, in these revolving loan funds by HUD requirement stays in the activity that it generates that generates it um, to be used for those projects and included in the eligible uses is support of the staff that deliver those revolving loan fund projects. Mm -hmm. So if it's not spent towards a salary, then it will just stay in the loan fund and become available for other economic development loans. Okay, and so the issue I have with this, you know it's, it's been my biggest thing since we started getting the numbers, is that they aren't generating loans. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, if you're not generating loans, why am I giving you money for salaries? Mm -hmm. I, I take issue at just automatically waving a wand and giving more money for salaries when they have such a large balance that is not being used for the purpose it was given. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? I have a Go ahead, Ray. Oh, this is, I have a question. Do you know, Heather, is, is you know, are these funds for salary, are they, is there any like intended use other than, you know, raises or anything like that? Or are they intending on hiring any additional staff or do you know how okay. this is supposed to be divvied up? Uh, so the, the economic development uh, fund um, in recent years, and when I say recent, I mean, since I've been here, maybe the last 10 years, 20% um, of the salaries of the two economic development staff people that work on the loans are supported through the program income of the loan fund. Um, so that number represents 20% of the salaries of two staff members. Um, and the remainder of their salary is paid by the general fund. Thank you. Any additional questions at all? Yeah. Brent? Um, I don't understand about what, what we mean, Chris, by generating loans. I mean, these people are basically managing existing loans. Am I correct in that? Uh, they do both. So they, they do manage, both. Okay. They manage their existing portfolio. Um, they uh, solicit applications. Um, so eligible uses in this category would be soliciting applications, processing them. Um, was, and not all the applications we get come to fruition. That's the other thing I would okay, say. That's so true in housing as when, well. When were the, how many loans did they get, or solicitation for loans did they get, say, in the last year? I, I don't know the answer to that question. Okay, so, um, but there probably have been some that they've got. I would assume, reviewed. yes. And okay. I mean, I think uh, several months ago, the committee did um, ask for some, uh, clarification from the economic development staff about, um, uh, you know, why they weren't producing as many loans. And okay. um, the explanation at the time was that it had been slow, uh, kind of starting with the floods last year and then, or the year before, and then um, kind of the one two punch of the pandemic that they weren't really seeing a lot of loan requests. Um, and then in recent months, uh, they did get a big influx of COVID, I say COVID, but CARES Act money um, outside of CDBG to address COVID needs and they've been focusing on those, but they have heard your concerns and in the last couple months, they have processed a few more loans than they had in the months prior. And these people are like city employees and we're paying a percentage of their city salary. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's correct? That's correct. Thank you. Chris? In our packet, and I don't know what page it is, but it's under obligated committed amounts. Mm -hmm. Under the Economic Development Fund, it says there are 11 small business loans. So there were three carried over, five new, and three prospective. The issue I'm taking is that they have available 884,000 and only committed 175,000. 
so i just don't feel i guess i'm saying for my perspective i can't agree to move that money over when i'm seeing you know 600,000 not going out the door for a long period of time any other discussion at all can we call the question Bobleton? Yes. Bird? Yes. Claussen? Yes. Gilmore? Yes. Hodges? Yes. Holloway? No. Johnson R? Yes. Keeper? No. T a Lord? Yes. Uh, Miller? No. Nolan? Yes. Who passes? The motion passes. Thank you. So the last remaining, uh, well, second to last remaining motion is to approve the slate, um, the full slate of requests or allocation recommendations. Uh, those are displayed here on the screen for you. Um, uh, the non-public services is on the left, the public services on the right, and the program income is towards the bottom. Uh, so it would be um, it would be a motion to accept or not accept the the full allocations there. I entertain a motion. So moved. Second. The motion is made by Hodges and seconded by Klassen. Ready for me? Don't, yep. Yeah. Okay. Bird? Yes. Claussen? Yes. Gilmore? Yes. Hodges? Yes. Holloway? Yes. Johnson R? Yes. Kiefer? Yes. Lord? No. Oh, sorry. Right. Sorry. Miller? No. Nolan? Yes. Ovalton? Yes. Passes. The motion passes. Um, and truly the last motion that we would need it for, for tonight would be, um, as I mentioned, HUD has announced our grant amount this year. Um, they have given us an actual dollar amount. However, it's still possible that that dollar amount could change. Um, it's unlikely at this point, and if it is changed, it would likely be by a very small number. Um, however, uh, the staff recommendation that was issued would still stand, which is to uh, each year the CAC approves a percentage plus or minus, um, and if CAC or if um, HUD makes any changes to the grant award then uh, we would adjust all of the applications. What is the percentage that we've done in the past? We've done plus or minus 15. In I would year. recommend that we allow staff to adjust plus or minus 15 percent. Um, Heather, I have a question. Does that have to come from the non-public sector or could it come from the, or the public sector or the non-public? Does it matter which um, section it comes from? It would be across the board. So okay, it would across come- the board. Okay. Because of the way the caps are calculated, it, if, 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 particularly if it was a reduction, it would have to come from both. Um, but practice has been, whatever the change is, it'll be plus or minus. The only thing I will say is, um, as I did mention, HUD adjusted the grant last year by $277 after it was awarded. And uh, we just um, made the decision we weren't gonna decide, divide $277 amongst all the agencies and the city took the hit on that one. Uh, they reduced them out by 277, and the city just reduced our, our admin request by 277. Thank you. Thank you. Joseph had a comment. I want to second uh, Fred's motion. Okay. For discussion purposes, if we don't do this, then we have to come back in to deal with that $227. That's correct. Motion has been moved in a second. Any further discussion? I should call the question, Don. Yep. Claussen? Yes. Gilmore? Yes. Hodges? Yes. Holloway? Yes. Johnson R? Yes. Kiefer? Yes. Lord? Yes. 
Miller? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Obleton? Yes. Bird? Yes. Good. Motion passes. Okay, the motion passes. Um, and in, um, in the allocation category, that is all we have for you. Um, I would remind you all that these recommendations will go to city council. Um, they will go to committee of the whole, I believe I have the dates as the 17th and um, it would be uh, approved, you know, considered approved or not approved by the full council on March 24th. Um, and then just so you know, the next steps, uh, we as staff will incorporate these into our annual plan, which has to be submitted to HUD by May 15th. Um, and then HUD does its process and we would expect to have our grant agreement sometime in August. Um, so that's kind of the timeline as we move forward and for the benefit of new members, I thought I would mention it. Um, the other thing is, uh, it is considered at Committee of the Whole. We do always extend the invitation to CAC members who would like to attend the council meeting and speak um, on behalf of CAC or um, you know, in support of the recommendations, we typically extend the chair uh, the invitation. Mm -hmm. um, welcome, I might have forgotten to mention that previously, but any CAC members are welcome and encouraged to attend. Um, and that would be, uh, the public hearing will be on March 17th. What time uh, 5.30, I have uh, one at 5.30 question. p.m. Mm -hmm. Because you said you won't be able to sign the documents with family, resources. Mm -hmm. What happens if they just don't get an audit mm -hmm. to you? What happens yep. to that money? Uh, it would come back to the CAC for what we call reallocation at the time that we do reprogramming. So in the fall, we reprogram money that's left over from a previous year. But the, the, the companion idea of that is for money not awarded in the current year, and that's called reallocation. So we would do them together should that become necessary. And it has happened in the past. Thank you. I uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, I have other business. Oh, sorry, Heather. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, well, I think you're going to like this other business. So, you know, you'll be glad that I reminded you. Um, so in terms of upcoming meetings, so um, we typically would meet every month. Um, in months where we don't have business, we would uh, let you know that we, um, as staff, don't foresee having any uh, business for you in April. Um, the exception to that would be if HUD comes and changes the allocation amounts by a great amount um, or anything of that nature. Um, so with COVID, I think the decision has to be made. Um, if you remember last year, uh, we met in March. Um, we did not meet in April, May, or June, and we did meet in July to discuss um, the uh, public input process for the year 48 plan. I mean, we just voted on year 47 and already talking about year 48. So I would propose that unless business arises um, from a staff perspective, uh, we do not foresee having business for you in April, May, or June. Uh, the CAC can choose to hold those meetings anyway if you would like to have discussion on any items um, or maybe that's just too long, you'd rather have it sooner, but just for your own information, April, May, and June, unless something would change, we do not see having any pressing business for you. Dale? Heather, could, could you, if, if or when or whatever, you receive an audit from Family Resources, could you send out an email to us and yeah. let us know that it's been received so at least we know? Yes, okay. absolutely Thank I can. Thank you. And, and that might be a reason perhaps we don't meet in April, but we do meet in May um, in case there is some change on that front. Uh, that would enable us to meet before we would have to sign any agreement. Um, maybe that, maybe under the circumstances, maybe June is just too far away. Oh. I would move that we don't have a meeting between now and July unless we hear from staff. Motion on table. Second. It's been moved. Motion and second it. Any further discussion? This can be just a voice vote if you choose. It's not allocation related. All those in favor say aye. 
Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to second Chris's motion to adjourn. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Aye. <laughs> okay. Eight o'clock on the dot, you guys. Thank you. Two hours. <laughs> Great work, everybody. Thank you, everybody. This was a tough uh, one. We so appreciate all uh, of your also, time and effort. Also, too, I would like to just take a minute to thank Heather and Don for the hard work, even tonight, getting all thank the information. You. There was a lot of changes and, and things moving around, so... Thank you so very much. Well, we appreciate that. We appreciate all of you. You guys really put time and effort into what you're doing, and it shows. And, and we appreciate the thought and consideration you put into it. Maybe July was the first time. Maybe July what? Yeah.